Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm so glad to be here. I think that my dogs are going to start barking to come in because they were barking to go outside just now. And it seems that their barking is over. So I just wanna, this is my, um, my little journal that I found and my stuff. And I made it a year ago. And so, my other journal is kind of like for vintage and my own pictures. This one is, I actually get, um, I start craving to have a, sorry, I'll get my words together in a second. I start just actually kind of craving to do something besides just one thing all the time. And so, you know, I do that. I have to go, I have to go um, in and out with, with some things. So this is a, um, This journal is for a little bit of more whimsy and um, than the other one. The other one is real and it is vintage, uh, vintage things from the past. I can't wait to show you some more stuff. The more I look, the more it's just so so much fun to look into these boxes that I have been putting off looking at for a really long time. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put some green down here. Um, I don't know if the brown from last night is going to blend in. It's okay with me if it does. And um, so I'm just going to see how this works out. Again, if you're new to all of this grunge and um, this is not clean scrapbooking like uh, some people think of. This is more like, you know, whatever. Whatever I can think of, that's what goes down. And it's usually with me, it's all process. Uh, sometimes I do a, a finished piece and and do the and show it. But for the most part, this is this is the process that I do. And. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm done with the phone problems that I was having for a while. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really get the uh, whole thing with IT, which is internet technology. And, um, you know, I, in my younger days, I learned how to turn on a computer in my classroom and we, we practiced at sending each other emails by sending the email and then running around, you know, which is sending it to another classroom. <laughs> and then we would run around to the other side and ask, did you get my email? <laughs> I mean, yes, it's through a wall, but I'm talking 10 feet away. So that's just the way it was back then. And it was very fun to be in on that, in those days, cutting edge technology in the classroom, in the primary classroom. 
keep in mind, we were not we were not older kid teachers. We were kindergarten and first grade, second and third grade teachers. Very. Uh, some of the third grade teachers were way more knowledgeable than um, than some of the rest of us. But for the most part, not everyone was inexperienced, but I was for sure. So that's why I'm a slow learner now, because it, it just, uh, first of all, it just takes longer after you get to a certain age, it just takes longer. And uh, it doesn't come second nature anymore to me. My kids, and especially my grandkids, are I mean, it's second nature to them. They know, they know what to do. My eight-year-old grandson is really good at something called Minecraft, and he is. I can't. You know, I wouldn't even. Not for a minute. Not for a minute. So I'm just gonna. I just put down this background and that's how that's how that's gonna look let's see maybe I should put some more over here I'm getting some little leftovers from the brown paint and I don't care it's okay I mean I care I care it's just it's okay with me if that's how it looks okay I need to stop and I'm gonna I'm going to dry it. With my hair blower. And then um I wanted to show you some things that I have found or Bought in Goodwill. This is a kind of a note pack and it was all clean and lovely and so I just I just took every single piece in here. One of those things you do while you're relaxing. And you know what I just uh, some people call it distressing it. it making it look old. Yeah, I think that's very pretty. And it's, it was relaxing for me to do. So this is a whole pack. So I can get it back in. And these are the ones that I chose from it. I don't know. Maybe that. This is one of Allie's scrap monsters. Very cute. Okay, so I'm just going to continue with the background here. I've got some, these are brand new. I think. Uh, Julie sent these to me. Thank you, Julie. I love them. They're just really fun to use. And the neat part of these, I think they're called the Crafters Workshop .com. Um, is the artist that makes these explains kind of what it's about 
And this one is kind of about mandalas or mandalas. And um, so these are partial mandalas. So there's a part of it in there. So cool. I just think that's so cool. So I'm gonna I'm going to it attempt to um, use this stencil a bit in here and uh, yeah I I have been you know going through going through some testing at the doctors and with all the holiday stuff and everything I I've, I've lost track of what I've what I've told you about and what I haven't um, the very last doctor's appointment I went to actually was uh, the cardiologist and he um, he ran your basic cardiologist um, testing the beginning testing that they go with and uh, he didn't find anything remarkably wrong so um, what he I think this is a guess because they're kind of secretive <laughs> in the beginning about what they're seeing and what they're suspecting but he ordered a thyroid test and now that I think about it, I, I do think I, I I mentioned this and um, I have not gotten the results from that one back the other thing he did and I totally expected this is that one of the medications that one of the doctors ordered one of the side effects is a swelling of the feet and ankles. And of course, that's what I get. I always get the side effect. And and so my he the cardiologist saw that my my feet and ankles were swollen. That that is smushed because of Part of, partly because of the stencil and partly because my paint's pretty wet. So um, I'm just going to go down here with this one. I'm going to check, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. And so because of the swelling of the feet and ankles, he needed to order a medicine that <laughs> takes away the swelling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm so, I just don't have any, I don't have proper respect. Let's just say that. And I should be more, more respectful uh, after all. These people are very Very educated. And I'm a teacher. I respect education. So I need to I need to do better about that. It's just that it's so predictable. I I knew that going in, a few things were gonna show up. And the reason I knew it is because I do live in this body and I do know that after all these years that's the way it's that's the way it is and I appreciate the help because the reason why I, I went in to begin with was because uh, to be honest I had run out of my medication for blood pressure and I didn't want a big series of testing, but that's what they wanted to do. And 
the odd thing is you, if you refuse the testing that they want to do, then they kind of don't pay any attention anymore to you. through the testing I hope that uh, they'll be okay to see me for whenever I want to be seen and not for when I don't want to be seen and <clears throat> yeah isn't that a pretty die someone gave that to me The other thing I don't think I, I don't actually think that um, I had a chance to tell you is um, the sleep study. You know that I went for one, uh, one nighttime sleep study and recently and I hardly slept or I did not sleep at all. So now I'm going to go back in for a, an appointment with the pulmonary specialist that ordered the sleep studies. And, and I'm also going to, um, he'll probably order another one. That's okay. I don't like going there. Because, number one, I don't sleep well, or at all, and that's why, that's why, uh, one reason why I'm so tired. But the other thing is, I do stop breathing in my sleep, and it makes for, you know, a lot of, just not getting enough oxygen, like in a day's time. That will give you symptoms all on its own. So, mm, let's see here. That'll be nice. And a couple of the symptoms are kind of a little bit frightening, and I haven't had them before. It's just been recent. One is dizziness. You know, I, I walk around and it's like I might fall. So I've been a little bit afraid to go on walks, but I'm, I am starting my walks again. And one of the things that, you know, I feel just really helps me are taking the walks. I go 10 minutes out, turn around and come back for 10 minutes. And what, what makes those increasingly better is that I walk faster. So for 10 minutes, when I first begin, I only can walk so far or so fast. And so it, it makes, it's easy. I mean, you just go for a walk. 
The weather here, for instance, today is really beautiful. And on those days when it's not so beautiful, you know, then you don't walk. That's just the way it is. And that's okay. It turns out okay. So. I did this before I went to Africa two years ago. I just I just started in really aggressively increasing my walking to same amount of time but faster. And uh, the yoga. The yoga is Huge. Makes a big difference for me. Let's see how we're doing on the filming. Filming is going well. I am on 21 minutes, so I might need to hurry up. How this went over makes it look distressed. And I kind of love that. So this will go in here, like that. And uh, let's see, I have some other things. So my goal with the, you know, I have to have these little goals, um, kind of like teacher thing, goals and objectives. Oh my, my goal with the, with the yoga was to get a lot more flexible and to build my my core strength, which is the in, inside um, muscles that support the organs, is my my guess. I don't know that that's correct, but it might be. <laughs> uh, and one of those is when you get stronger, when you do these little basic, really basic uh, yoga. Um, exercises to to increase your strength that's going to have to dry then uh, it becomes awesome it becomes um, mm, I don't know about this it becomes a great way To feel better, I mean, I just feel better. Between the walking and the yoga, I lost weight. I felt better. And it lasted, I didn't, I got walking in, in Africa. It wasn't the same kind of walking as I did here, but there was walking. Where I stayed at the pastor's house, he did not want me to go out walking alone. And after I after I went out walking with, oh, his kids or, or him, um, other people, I saw why, you know, it's, Uganda is, Third world country people are people are looking for um, 
they're desperate for things to eat. And um, ways to survive. So that's what that's what they are looking for. And um, and then also their way of life is so different than ours. It's just way different. And for all the reasons that I loved my experiences there. It was also kind of frightening at times. And, you know, I wanted to, uh, I'm going back. I know that, I just want to. Um, but I will be a bit wiser this time. Let's see here. This is going to introduce another couple of colors, and that's okay. So now that I have started my walking again, I will I will also do my super simple aerobics, and I'll just be. Truly, I'll be feeling so much better for it. And because of that, I will be so much happier. But for me, this is just the way I am. If I, I just can't quite force myself to go out and be, be doing stuff like that, like walking every day or doing um, yoga. without a reason. If I am just doing it, you know, to to be doing it, to be getting healthier and stuff like that, it just kind of doesn't work out. I just don't, that's not motivation for me. If I have something more, something behind that, more motivating, then, then I'll probably Number one, be more consistent. And number two, for me, it, it will just be more fun. Okay, now I need my Mod Podge. This little cardboard piece that comes in the in the Mod Podge, I like to keep it in there, not for any other reason except this is what I think. I think it kind of keeps the the lid from sticking. So I know. Everyone watching is knows how to do nap, glue down napkins, and so you know just fast forward. You don't have to, you don't have to watch this if you don't like it. I like the edges being um, torn edges. So that's why I 
tore it out with the wetting the single layer napkin with water with a little paintbrush and I keep water here all the time I, I'm not I, I am usually using water for something or other all the time either thinning down paint or I don't know like that let's see maybe I'll just do this hey I'll just do this while well, I'm here so why do I want to go back to Uganda it's kind of for the same reasons as why I wanted to go in the first place. I want to check on the children. I want to check on the orphanage. And I want to see my friend Patrick again. Young man that's the director of the orphanage. Because he's just an awesome guy. He's just a young man that is... I don't know. The people there are, are, in my mind, they're all really tough survivors. Because, for one thing, you know, there's a lot of death. If you followed my Facebook page, you'll know. It's hard to keep a child alive when there's not enough money to pay for medical care in case they get sick, which little kids do get sick. And if in, in Uganda, in Africa, if you don't have the money to pay for medical care, you don't get it. And they do, yes, they do have free clinics, but that's what happened. That's what I witnessed happened the little baby of the family of the pastor where where I stayed for one thing he was 10 months old and teething which is normal and and he got the flu everyone in the family had the flu it's normal and then they 